Welcome to Sex and Soul, a podcast about all things related to sexuality, relationships and the deeper dimensions of our lives. I am your host, Lynn S. I am a sexuality and relationship coach and mentor, as well as a tantric yoga teacher. I'm so excited that you are here. May Sex and Soul light you up from inside and change your life to be more orgasmic, joyful and deep. Hey, welcome to Sex and Soul. This episode is mm, such a beautiful one. I am here, not alone, actually. It is the first episode, the first podcast episode that I'm recording with guests. And today I have Mona and Eva here. <laughs> hey, darlings. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, so happy you're here. And so just for you watching, listening, Mona and Eva are, well ladies who followed majestic last year no this year it's actually we started last year i say last year but it went into this year and so today we are just going to really vibe on yeah what majestic or actually more in general what even embodiment coming home in in your sex in your heart in your intuition what that does to a woman and you know I'm so happy that you said yes to my request because I was, of course, while we were in the program, um, feeling you and you, Eva, you joined a bit later, but then Mona said, oh, but Eva is doing it. And she's, wow, there's a lot of things happening for her. So I was like, yes, yes, yes. Um, and so I was already, I mean, in the program feeling like, okay, there's, there's big shifts and beautiful shifts happening. And then now I see also four months later, what is happening in your life still. And so for me, it's such a beautiful and I'm not saying that majestic, of course, is the only <laughs> reason is just an opening up to radiance and things that are inside of you. And, and of course, the tools of majestic that that remain and that you can repeat and reconnect with whenever you need it, like a shower. Yeah, we need that every day. It's like the same with, I think, personal development and embodiment. We need that. We need that every day. Um, so, yeah, it just makes my heart sing, you know, makes my heart sing. And um, yeah, I think huh, to start, I didn't. I told my listeners or I told you last week, like I'm not preparing this podcast. It's part of my um, letting go of perfectionism and controlling, like things don't need to be prepared in life. Some things in life, you just really need to flow with. So today we're also just really going to flow. So I am curious and you can decide who wants to go first. Like um, what made you say yes to Majestic? Like what were you or where were you, you know, before before starting at the beginning of the program, you know, what, what would you like to share about how you're feeling inside of your self, your self-confidence, your sexuality, your relationships, your professional life, just, yeah, whatever you, you feel like sharing about the before, let's say. Who's going to go first? <laughs> I guess you. <laughs> um, I think um, Majestic was recommended to me by a, uh, by a friend of mine who already decided she wanted to join and um we were we were treating ourselves to a wellness day like we were in the sauna and she was like oh um i, I just joined majestic uh, there's this woman she's uh, doing all kinds of crazy things uh with feminine energy all of type of stuff and i was like immediately um intrigued because I was um, deep down in a, a three, four year uh, relationship at that moment um, with somebody that I've um, been best friends with since I was 12 years old. So like a really deep uh, connection. Um, but things were, were getting like very stuck, um, especially in myself, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really know what um, my sexuality was like for me, like the, the, the feminine energy was very, it wasn't there at all. Um, I, I got very uh, stuck into my masculine energy, which, which has been very present in my whole life for me. Uh, so the, the um, yeah, I, I was raised very, um, go get it, work hard, um, result-based um, type of thing. So that's what I took with me also in relationships. Um, I was always like the masculine uh, type, um, come on, we have to do this, I want to do that. And, and 
no breaks, no days off, that type of thing. And that also really reflected in my uh, relationship and in my personal life and my sexuality as well. Um, I didn't feel feminine anymore at all. And that's why I actually joined um, because I wanted to, yeah, feel more feminine, be the woman that I am. And that's what, what I was looking for personally. <laughs> mm, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think that's such a recognizable thing. Yeah, this like being very masculine as a woman, this goal getter, this result based. I think it's such a thing that is so blah, conditioned in our society. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for yeah for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Eva, <I'm> curious. <laughs> yes, actually, my story is a bit similar. I think um, I've also been in very masculine environments um, before, studying engineering, working in corporate, um, feeling a lot like things go too fast for me, being overwhelmed a lot and feeling like I need to compete with men on in ways that I can't because I don't have that kind of um, energy or I can, I can bring it maybe or I can work really hard for it, but it was always so draining. Um, and I felt already for a long time this need to really let go and surrender and find more of like a softness in life. Um, mm. But also in my in my surroundings, it's not very present. And so yeah, I was really looking for for this spark somewhere that could that could offer this to me. And then um, I, I was talking to Mona, and she she told me that she joined your program. Uh, and then I, I was kind of curious, so I, I looked you up online, and then I saw um, that you opened up one more spot, like already when it was um, going on. So I was saying, okay, this is this is it. I'm gonna I'm going to do this. I felt very aligned with it, so I jumped um, to just explore um, and to find this like group of women, a place where you can just um yeah be and flow and and surrender um and that was yeah that was really healing for me hmm. Hmm. yeah yeah interesting that you say this again this masculine thing and then feeling overwhelmed and feeling you have to compete and then realizing oh we don't and it's true like <laughs> we are cyclical beings we are not meant to to be in this nine to five kind of culture yeah it's such a yeah and <gasps> always feeling really bad about it like I'm not good enough or like mm. being feminine is the or I didn't have this words for it back then I wouldn't say it that way but just that being soft is the bad way and that we need to be more hard and that but now yeah I see the other side that it's actually super valuable to also be the other way but in yes. that time I didn't I didn't see it that way yet mm. yeah yeah we weren't thought we weren't raised that way I think most women I, I didn't even know there was a there was another way than the the masculine way, you know. And and I think uh, when I first looked at your Instagram, Lynn, I was I was so triggered. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, I want to join, but she's also like, who is she? She triggers me. Like she's so uh, yeah. You're obviously obviously very feminine, very like sexual uh, energy, very out there. And and I was so deep in my masculine energy that i i couldn't even relate to that you know and and yeah and that's why i actually joined because i was like okay this is triggering me so bad i i am obviously jealous of this mm -hmm. energy and i want it so that's why i, I actually joined yeah mm -hmm. yeah i think that's something that all of us when we're honest we recognize yeah that we have this um especially women amongst women I think probably men have it too yeah this kind of okay when somebody triggers you in general there's always an invitation yeah there's always this invitation okay why am I judging where is there discomfort with something that I see in this other person yeah and then it's so beautiful I mean this is brave you know for you Mona to say like okay I'm joining you know other people would say yeah <laughs> I'm unfollowing <laughs> 
So these are the, you know, the brave women who, who jump in. Um, yeah, but I think it's beautiful that you you name that because I think probably some of the ladies yeah, listening and, and watching can can recognize this. And, and I for sure also have that with other women. And then it's like this invitation of, okay, what is it actually saying, saying about me and what is someone else actually, you know, yeah, offering here? Yeah. And so diving into the archetypes, had you worked with archetypes before? Because Majestic, yeah, takes you, for those of you who don't know, listening who don't know, Majestic is like this amazing journey through four archetypes, the slut, the wild woman, the queen, and the high priestess. And these for me personally are like the archetypes that are, ah, uh, you know, they offer so, such a complete actually, uh, together, especially such a complete experience of, of life. Yeah? And they all have their their gifts and, and of course also their shadows and their yeah things that they they highlight, let's say, when once you step into them, so I'm curious how you experienced that and, mm. and you know how how it was for you to kind of play with with them. I already read some books about like female archetypes, but I think one of the big things that I learned from Journey Majestic was that reading something is not the same as experiencing it. Like grasping a concept with your mind is not the same as feeling it in your body and really um uh, yeah, embodying it. Mm. Uh, because you can read about archetypes or you can yeah know about what what they stand for but to really do practices to go into that side of yourself and then explore the side of yourself is so like such a powerful powerful thing to allow yourself to go there mm -hmm. so that was really new for me and yeah. i think i got a lot of out of that <laughs> <laughs> i like the little <laughs> <laughs> yes. now i want to ask about the slut <laughs> yeah that was a big one for sure <laughs> yeah let's dive in how, how was the slut for you eva um very new actually like i realized i've never been a slut in my life and i was a bit sad about it like i'm young and i, I need to have fun like it's it's okay to to have the side of yourself and to really let her come out and, and to create a safe space for yourself to explore this part of yourself um, and the practices that we did, like the dancing and the, and the visualizations. Yeah, they really, they really brought this out, I think, because now I am a bit of a slut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Smile like you to ear the whole time because I'm like, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I think it, it was the same for me I think the the I didn't I haven't worked with archetypes before so it was also new for me except for like the concepts that I that I vaguely knew um but I think going into the slot was like the, the the biggest eye opener for me because it was the first one and also I think I always uh yeah had a negative connotation with the word slut so naturally i i am like a, a obviously a, a sexual being and i love um taking care of myself feeling sexy feeling pretty and also feeling seen like that's something that i've enjoyed my entire life and i'm not ashamed of that like um but as yeah as the years went on i i started to feel more ashamed of that of of, of being who i am and i'm feeling sexy that it was like no you can't do that that's that's slutty like in a negative way you know and going into the slut and the, and all the exercises and the and the uh, embodiments uh, as eva said it, it was wow <laughs> yeah that was crazy for me because I, I i walked around like wow i am sexy <laughs> <You know? laughs> And and I needed that. I, I really needed that to to come back to that first to to then go into the other archetypes. Yeah. Mm. Yes. That's so much what the slut brings us, yeah. I mean, of course it is about the pleasure for the pleasure's sake. Yeah, and this kind of hedonistic landing in wow, you know, my body can give me so much deliciousness and ah oh, juice, you know, this mm. And then, and then you bring that in life. And then that's the way that you walk on the street with just amazing aliveness. 
and joy. Mm -hmm. There's so much joy that comes from landing in the slot and allowing your slot to come out and to flirt and to dance and to she loves life. I mean, she's here to just be fucked by life and to fuck life and you know. <laughs> yeah. For me, it was also really nice to do it in these practices to like create a little alter ego for myself that I could go and explore with. That yes. made it a lot more safe. Yeah. Um, and like, yeah, I, I would dare to go out there and, and be like, okay, today or like this hour, I'm going to embody whatever it means to me yeah. to be a slut. And then afterwards, you know, you can let it go again. It feels so nice to go in and out and then it becomes a little, yeah, a little bit part of yourself. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. And thank you. I mean, I, I, you say safety and, and safe and that's super important. Yeah. That's like this, this indeed, this, the embodiment of, of, or the invitation of expanding into these archetypes while feeling safe. And that's something that is such an individual, obviously such an individual process. And you feel that for yourself and every woman can test that and experiment that for herself. And no woman will ever look the same as, you know, embodying the slot. No, uh, this is all of our own, yeah, expressions, unique expressions. So yeah, thank you for also pointing that out because it's a very important part of of the of the work yeah and it's important also for some ladies maybe listening and feeling that the slot is very far she can feel very far it can be intimidating you know all of them can feel intimidating for different reasons you know of course there's a trigger and there's an invitation like okay why and so how can i just allow the slot even if it's not 10 percent, which is what i often mention but maybe just five percent and what if indeed as you say eva oh I invite her now for the next hour for 5%. Oh, maybe I can allow her for 20%, you know, tomorrow or whatever. And this is how you do it. And then you regulate your nervous system. You're feeling your nervous system. Oh yeah, this feels safe. This is a safe way. And, and then this is how you expand more and more. So I can't wait to see you in two years. And then you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shall we move to the wild woman? This is the second archetype in Majestic. Yeah. And so the wild woman, I mean, for me, at least how I, you know, the, the big gift of the wild woman is the connection to the dark feminine, to this um, kind of emotional maturity that she invites us to step into fully, uh, but also kind of unleashing of a certain inner power and the negative and the dark or so-called negative uh, dark emotions is a better way, way to, to describe them. Um, yeah. How is that? How is that? Yeah, this one is a big one, I think, um, also because I've been taught that, that you're not allowed to like be this ugly ex expression of, of um, yeah, of yourself. Like as a woman, you need to be pretty and, and nice and quiet and yeah, having this place where it's like, yeah, you're allowed to scream and like let go. And, and really show yourself and this dark side. It's so, so important and so healing. Um, but it's very difficult. It's definitely a road I'm still walking because I can still feel myself get back into that. Oh, but if I do that, I might not be attractive or I might not be, it's this tiny still conditioning I think going on um, with that, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think for me it was more, um... I, I feel uh, very much what Eva said for me, it was also a bit like that. And also like learning to, to take up space. And as you said, it doesn't have to be pretty and nice, but yeah, I, I deserve um, to be here and, and to be seen in whatever way I want to be uh, seen. And that can be dark. And um, yeah, that, that was, that was, um, yeah, a crazy eye-opening for me because I, I always learn to be yeah I, I have a I have a I always want to be um approved by by anyone like I, I always wanted to be oh I want this person to think I'm nice I don't want that person to be angry at me for choosing myself and for being wild and free and so I always like stayed in my safe little box where everybody thought okay this is her um and the wild woman really taught me that I, that I can like 
expand my box and go go up <laughs> i mean jump out of the box and then come go back if, if i don't feel safe but but really like yeah be whoever i want to be that was a wild woman for me i think yeah mm. yeah yes yeah powerful is being allowed to be ugly yeah as a woman being allowed to be messy yeah and it's a beauty what i find you know is that it's actually when we have these these spaces these sacred spaces where we can really explore ah oh, this darkness and this intensity of our emotions it's actually that makes us way more balanced yeah and that changes the way that we that we actually are emotionally regulated in in our day-to-day -day life yeah also in our for example romantic relationships yeah is that something that that you you experience as well yeah definitely i'm just, just thinking about it but um yeah. i think it's really also a thing of allowing myself to just say whatever it is that i want and i need Mm. and to trust that my partner will be able to also communicate this way it's like a lot about good communication and boundaries setting I think first mm -hmm. but then if you have created this you can really allow yourself to to go there to say like right now I need to be I need this or I need to be alone or I need to um I want it like this and really show up um as yourself completely but it's a it's a long road to walk to not be so um yeah how do you say to not be like let your emotions run away with you too like mm. because in a relationship yeah you want to still find each other yes. um so it's uh it's even on your own top if you want to be a wild woman together with somebody else <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah 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 i understand yeah what you what you mean it's like this uh i mean and that's why i mean in the wild woman if i remember correctly there's a there's a practice yeah that is like the spear versus white that really learns this or teaches this communication difference between oh when i'm triggered i come at a spear towards someone else and this is i've learned this own practice through sophie josephina who learned it i think from john wyland just to connect the, the dots a little bit here you know, so it's about polarity and so on. And then instead of going at someone with, as a spear, but instead, what if you learn to bring your emotion, your strong emotion from a wideness, from your heart, actually. And again, this embodiment, yeah, where you feel your dark emotion as an energy inside of your system and you're able to offer it from the heart and to kind of this alchemical trans transmutation. This is what I, 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 I call it, basically. Um, and this is, yeah, this is such a very tantric way also to, to be with emotions mm -hmm. and to, to digest them. And then of course it's a, it's a practice. Yeah. It's a practice for, for me too. These are really, I mean, yeah, Buddhists, <laughs> they're, you know, and enlightened people, uh, they are, you know, not triggered and they're able, but this is also part of our human yeah process is to, is to, yeah, this is a learning, learning process, of course. Yeah. And especially in romantic relationships where we are triggered in our deepest wounds and, and in our childhood woundings and so on. Yeah, this is, yeah. And then, yeah, there's there's a lot. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot there, of course, yeah. But also on the other side that it allows you to go so much deeper if you allow yourself to be seen completely, if you mm -hmm. stay on that nice, attractive, pleasant um, surface. Yeah. yeah, you never show yourself completely. Yeah. So it's, been really nice to go there together <laughs> mm. and it's messy and it can be really ugly but um yeah afterwards or like even during the process it brings you so much more together I think yeah yeah and how how does it change the sex um well in the same way that you like let yourself be seen emotionally I feel um yeah, you also go into your deeper desires and into your more maybe ugly desires that you don't think are like the pretty girl or whatever. Yeah, you can, it, it creates a deeper connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's a, the primal sexuality piece. Yeah. 
yeah. that can be explored and mm -hmm. yeah yeah and also like the, the ability to do, uh also there take up space and 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 communicate better i think mm -hmm. um I, I think having a, a romantic relationship is is a great um mirror i think I think it's harder to 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 like be the be the embody the archetypes in your relationship but it's also it's so great because there's always somebody like that's that really knows you mirroring back to you and i think that's 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 so beautiful it's it's i think it's easier to do that by yourself because you will never mirror yourself the same way as a partner will if you if you know what i mean like um so they know you better than you know yourself on certain levels so i think that's really beautiful so Mm. yes yeah mm. Mm. okay so what about the queen and worthiness yeah. yeah the queen is really about this well one of the elements of the queen is this is this worthiness and this uh yeah how 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 is the queen landed and how did she open up inside of you during during your experience I loved, I really loved the queen. I, I think that's the one that really stuck with me and is, is still here here and now. Like I, I feel, <laughs> I feel like a queen on a daily level now. I, 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 I really, I, I embodied that one. <laughs> um, if I can say like that, I, I, I'm constantly reminding myself, this is what I am, who I am. I, I, I really like, men will worship the ground I walk on like everybody will do that like I, I that's what I really I try to remind myself of that often um yeah so that was really really new for me mm. <laughs> as I said um before about the wild woman to really take up the space you know and yeah and let people serve me instead of serving others all the time yes Yes. Receive as well. Learn to yes. receive. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And this queendom is is like this. Indeed, it's really about the receiving and the serving also. Yeah. And what can you? How do you give? How do you? In 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 work also because you're also a coach, Mona. So that's the the thing. Like, oh, how can you? Well, when you step in this, in this queendom, you find your own light in such a beautiful way and your own worthiness so you can of course see that in other people as well and then what yeah. you offer and how you offer whatever it is that you offer and what you do in life it changes yeah yeah it really yeah that's so true and i think you can you can see it in in, in others as well we were chatting about about it before um with Eva as well, that, that people really come up to you and say like, oh, wow, you've changed so much. You're, you're so radiant. Um, and, and I think that's really the queen energy that 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 is, is really coming through. And I can recognize it in other women who feel like, oh, wow, they have found it or, or are there at, at, at this moment, at least. Um, they really are the queen. And, and I think that's once you've hit like that specific spot it's it's everywhere yeah mm -hmm. um and i think as a as a coach as well i i feel uh, so, so much more confident like before i was i was like okay um am i am i able to um teach on and now i know like okay this is this is me this is safe and people really want it's it's not always about um the information you give but also the energy you know and 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 once you you've reached that queen yeah state of being people will want to be near your energy and that's also code yeah a part of coaching not only giving information but also giving energy sharing vibes <laughs> yeah that's beautiful mm. that's really really new to me as well yes yeah, it's the frequency that changes. And people yes. want to go there and they can smell it and they can taste it. And they're like, mmm. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. 
what does she have? I want to see. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah. what I had with you, you know, with the, the triggers. I, I, I uh, said before that you were really triggering me before I went to the Majestic, I went to the Majestic course. I think it was the, the, the queen that really triggered me like, wow, this, this energy, like it's triggering me so bad, but I want it, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't even, I don't even know if I like it, mm. but I want it anyway. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that's so powerful. Yeah. You really feel drawn to it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a part that is like, um, I mean, that's just what comes up when I hear you talk about these things, you know, it's like this, a part inside of us that, that, of course, there's always this hurt part and 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 or hurt parts, <laughs> even plural, yeah, that feel like, oh, but I'm I'm not worthy, you know, or I cannot be like her, you know, these ego parts. And I think that's that's this this yeah, incredible invitation of, of these last two archetypes, the queen and the high priestess, is really like, wow, but no, god damn it, you know, we're all these magical entities just because we're human and we are alive yeah and we all have gifts and we all have amazing things to share with this this world yeah and when we can go past our conditioning and past our these ideas that that yeah someone else can be that but we are not as good as them or some whatever it is oh yeah that just can start kind of you know vibrating and and oh yeah that's yeah, so beautiful and it, it also really I think the queen also made me realize that there is no such thing as one queen, you know, <laughs> there can be so many queens. And, and that was something that I struggled with um, before and always am. I think it's a very human thing to feel jealous of other people or envy them for having something you don't have. But everybody has its own path, you know, and I, I don't have to be like somebody else to be a queen they can be a queen and i can be queen without yeah there is no there's room for all of us and that's that's really beautiful as well yeah, yeah. and majestic that's the the name majestic is that yeah it's the majesty that we all are yeah yes oh thank you so beautiful uh eva is there something you would like to say about this Yes, definitely. The The Queen module was actually the first module I joined. So it was quite powerful for me. Um, and yeah, during one of the, the exercises, I remember it really came up during that time that I felt so annoyed by my own controlling behavior, like in my relationship, but also in life. I'm really trying to make things work. A certain way and being frustrated that things just didn't go the way I wanted them to go mm. um, and this also came up during sex I think like being controlling um, and just not being able to let go and not being able to really receive um, and yeah we really worked through this for me it, it, something really big came up in, in one of the one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions um, and it, I think we, we talked about it in like a sex um, kind of environment where I was about this, but afterwards it, it was such a reflection on my life of like not being able to receive, not feeling worthy in life, feeling like it needed to be hard, like I needed to always, yeah, needed to suffer in some way to, to be worthy of, of um, yeah, people saying you did well, like something like this really came up for me. Um, and, and since then, since that actually that module, I've been really working through that and it has led to some, yeah, some big breakthroughs in my life. Some big things have changed things since, since then. So also professionally. Um, so the queen energy really for me was to, to have this like letting go and, and, trusting that I'm good enough and things will come to me, things will happen to me. People think I'm good enough and um, I can I can let go and yeah, things will come my way. Yeah. And also you don't need to have to, you are good enough already. Like mm, nothing has to yeah. happen. 
nothing has to happen you are already good enough and that's yeah i i, I really resonate with what you said also um about the, the always the, the pleasing behavior and you did well like i think that's one of my favorite things to hear <laughs> um like oh you did great and 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 yeah it's it's so messed up that that we yeah we are just constantly out there uh seeking approval yeah. from others and i think uh for me personally um uh, mostly from men as well in, in relationships um and in sexuality like always putting their pleasure before mine and even getting frustrated like if something didn't like go the way I wanted it to go um just like you said and I, I think yeah the, the queen really made me receive and wow that's great and 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 men also really like to give you know you don't have to be <laughs> you don't have to give out all your energy to be yeah to do well um that's yeah, so powerful to just yeah. mm. Mm. I'm loving this conversation it's so <laughs> ah, so beautiful yeah yeah ah, thank you yes mm. hi priestess mm. Mm. and just I like, say hi priestess <laughs> and I feel like this shower of energy like ooh because when we talk about them, we, we can evoke them, yeah? And at the end of the program, that's what we do. Yeah, we walk through all of them and we can, yeah, this multi-dimensional being that we are, yeah? Let's, uh, yeah, let's feel the high priestess. Mm. What did she do for you? Yeah, this awareness, this surrender. She's, you feel how also they kind of click into the parts that are, you know, connecting to the queen, but then the high priestess, she does have her own her own signature yeah her own her own energy her own vibe ah, this beautiful connection to i mean to soul and to who we are beyond yeah the queen is this worthiness of, in the ego also and then also beyond when the high priestess is really in the in the beyond okay but it's kind of really bridge yeah. between yeah eva i think for me like something the first thing that comes up, it's, it really made me realize that my sexual energy is also my creative energy, my, my, like my superpower. It's not just to be projected onto somebody else, but it's something for me to really work with in life and to, to every day, um, collect or like make sure that it's going throughout me and, and, um, that it's something like, a spiritual thing too and something sacred for me to to really use and um, be connected with both like nature um, with the universe or whatever like yeah for me it feels like this um, and have um, yeah like deeper connection through my sexuality and that it's not just for sex but that it's really for me to use in this life to create um whatever i want to create yeah i think after after majestic i also went deeper into tantra so um yeah i've been i've been exploring this even more um but yeah this is the first mm. thing that came to yeah life. it's beautiful <laughs> Yeah, so I think for me it was mostly uh, the high priest that really showed me like who I am and also who I where I want to be um, in the near future and also really accept that I think I think I haven't I hadn't really accepted the 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 being that I am fully um, mm. before the majestic but especially before the high priestess like there was always a uh, a part of me that felt like a tiny bit ashamed because my I feel like my purpose in this life is different than obviously different than than anybody's but like different than the usual path um and and it really made me yeah I, I realized that that it's so powerful that I that I at this I am 25 that at this age I've already found it like and, yeah. and and that I can already embody it and and that I that I should let go of all the shame and the the guilt like it's it's so 
just like Eva said, with the creative energy, I, I feel that too, that I, ah, there's so much, there's so much inside me that, that wants to get out. And the, the high priestess really showed me like, okay, you, you are this kind of witchy, uh, spiritual, sexual being. And, and it's, it, it, you're, you're, the more I go into my feminine, and that's what I really, really noticed the past few months after Majestic, the more I go into my feminine energy, the, the, the greatest gifts come to me. Like, and I don't, there's no use for me to be in this masculine go energy. No, I need to flow. I need to surrender and just be. And then like, obviously combined with the masculine energy, but then all the great things happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really, yeah. The priestess really showed me like what I am capable of. Uh -huh. You're really sparkling while you're talking about this. Like, <laughs> and then, and the, the, I think, yeah, I think to like minimize all of that. Like, yeah. <laughs> you just know. Yeah, of course I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think both like Eva and me, we are we we go way back but we, we really reconnected like uh, shortly before and during majestic um because we we went i mean i think uh, we I, I can't speak for eva but i think we went to, to like very similar um yeah journeys and it's so beautiful to have another woman to yeah to go through all of that with and to support each other and and yeah, it's, it's so powerful to just cheer each other on. There's there's no competition what, whatsoever. I mean, Eva is going to to teach a yoga class on my next event, and we're just going to mm -hmm. create together. And that's so it's so beautiful, and I love that. And I didn't have that before. I was always like, oh no, I need to compete. Uh, I need to I need to become better, and I don't have that anymore. And it's so mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, the ladies! Huh? The smiles. <laughs> yeah, the smiles. I mean, this is recorded also video. That's why the video thing is a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the people can also just look how we're just sitting here in a kind of a blissful state, and and yeah. Mm. But yeah. that's also just one thing I I wanted to say, like for everybody who is considering joining Majestic, like your your energy. I've I've had the the opportunity to also like spend the weekend with you in the woods on another retreat um which was amazing mm -hmm. um and it's it's insane that you you radiate everything that you you do it's like whenever i am near you or talk to you it, i'm like super mm -hmm. giggly and bubbly and i don't know and it's it's so powerful so yeah just i would just jump if I were you, <laughs> that's just what I wanted to say. <laughs> it's a personal journey. Everybody has to decide for themselves. But I think as a coach, you are a very, very powerful being. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Yeah, thank you. Are there any last words because i know eva you you want to go you, well of course you, you, you're going to the fitness <laughs> <laughs> i like that too you're inspiring me oh she's going to fitness on friday evening wow <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh? me too by the way oh wow you oh, both are going to the fitness you better get your ass to the gym <laughs> <laughs> might go for a run just to you know <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think, I think for me, there's just such a, yeah, such gratitude, you know, and, and, um, yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel very connected. Yeah. I feel very connected to, to you and to your stories and, uh, it's, it's such an honor. I'm just, uh, humble and humble uh, and, and, and just honored and, um, yeah, just thank you for your trust. Yeah. Thank you for your trust. Um, because some of these things are, are difficult things and you're just brave, you know, we're all just brave women and we're all just doing life and, and 
we're doing life together yeah we're as you said Mona we're supporting each other uh to to rise up yeah and this is this is what is happening on this planet and yeah it's just amazing mm -hmm. yeah I love, I love being triggered by you. <laughs> <laughs> in the good way, in the bad way, it's all a beautiful all mix. <laughs> Sorry, repeat. I said in all the ways. Yes, in all the ways. I, I think <laughs> if, if there's any advice like that I can give, it's like if, if, if there's any triggers or fear or yeah, some, some pain points in your life, I think that's where you, where your journey has to, go towards you know and I don't I don't say you have to do crazy things like life-threatening situations no but if you have like a I don't know anytime I, I have a fear or a or something that like triggers me I, I really try to to go to that point and find out why yeah. and that's where personally for me that's where where all the growth um, yeah. happens yeah. yes yeah can't believe you're 25 and already nice nice it's always <laughs> it's always going faster for every, each new generation it's what i'm noticing it's yeah, yeah. it's very beautiful yeah ah uh, thank you my sweethearts thank you my sweethearts uh, it's been such a yeah such a pleasure to have this beautiful conversation with you um and um yeah i don't know what else to say see you soon yeah you if you go <laughs> do fun things together you can invite me when i'm in the country <laughs> okay <laughs> yes. yes and also actually yeah what comes up now is like i do also want to organize retreats so that's something that will be coming oh, yeah so oh. all of us can actually come together for a week and do practices and and in some beautiful exotic uh yeah situation yeah honestly i think you can i think you can really go deeper into like week long or, or weekends even yeah mm -hmm. yeah there's i mean there's a the necessity to have both yeah to have a daily practice from a yogi perspective they say better 10 minutes every day than yeah yeah than to have the five hours yeah every every five months or so uh so yeah it's really this beautiful combination of of indeed deep dives and and uh, retreat style stuff and then and then, yeah, the, just the practices every day, every day, every day. Ah, anyways, ah, sending you lots of love. Send me a picture of your bum before and after the, the fitness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ah. And uh, yeah. mm, speak to you soon. And thank you again for being here today. Thank you for having us. <laughs>